Okay, people, we're gonna rock where the streets have no name, unless it's you two way. Check out a super rare and famous jacket that gets a gold star. She designed the tour jackets and the crew jackets for just about every studio, television show, and band in Los Angeles during that era. I had no idea. Watch a Yeti fight some foo with a concert smash guitar and debut a historic Guns N' Roses recording that could honestly be their first. Is this something yeah. potentially that maybe people have never heard before? Absolutely. And later, an all-access pass to Zappa Records. In this box is something pretty cool. What's in the box? What's in the box, man? Hello, music maniacs. I'm Ahmed Zappa, and welcome to Rock My Collection. And of course, as per the huge, our appraiser extraordinaire, Stephen Breitman. He's like the Lennon to my McCartney, the Peaches to my Herb, and the Captain to my Tennille. I can't do this show, don't you touch me. Can't do this show without him. And I think you know what I'm trying to say. That was awkward. I did like it. <laughs> We've got peeps all over America and some live in studio, and they all want us to rock their collection and to tell them how much it's all worth. First up, let's go to Long Island, New York, and Clive Young. Clive, how are you? Doing well, doing well, you guys? Uh, great, welcome to Rock My Collection. Clive, I see lots of records, I see a little Mando in the background. What do you do for a living? Uh, I run a magazine about recording studios, concert sound systems, that kind of thing. So, uh, Very cool. Yeah, when when the Rolling Stones come to town, I, I talk to their engineers and find out how they make them still sound like they're 14. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So what do you what do you have to share with us today? Um, well, a couple of years ago, I came across this. It, it's an actual New York City street sign uh, that was created for an album called No Line on the Horizon. To kick it off, U2 played five nights in a row on uh, the David Letterman show. I remember. To kick that off, they had a big press conference outside the theater with the mayor at the time, Mayor Bloomberg. And they renamed for the length of the week that stretch of uh, 52nd Street as U2 Way. Every day I would leave work and look up at the street, you know, at the street sign and, and say, well, you know, someday that'll be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but at least I get to see it now. And at the end of the week, you know, they took it down and, and that was that. Um, fast forward uh, seven years, and I'm out at the end of Long Island in this cute little town called Greenport, yeah. which is a vacation -y type of place. It's all, you know, ice cream places and antique shops and blah, blah, blah. And it's it's Independence Day weekend. So my wife and I were walking by this, this antique shop, and this sign literally just lying in the dirt in front of the store. So I, I immediately I knew what that was because even though it had been seven years and, and everyone kind of forgotten that this had ever happened, I'd walked by it every single day for a week. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, w w what is that doing there of all things? So I picked this up. I'm like, it, it, it's not some novelty sign. It is a, you know, honest to God, real street sign. So I'm like, well, there's no way in the world I can afford this, but I, I got to find out at least, you know, the story behind this thing. So I take inside the shop and there's this little old lady straight out of, of, of central casting. And I asked her, you know, could you tell me something about the sign? You know, I'm, I'm playing dumb because it comes natural. And, and she says, <laughs> oh, well, I put it outside because of Independence Day. I'm like, really? And I'm thinking, what the heck does this have to do with Independence Day? Right. And she's like, it has the Statue of Liberty and it says you two way. So it means you too can make your way to America. It's all about immigration. And I'm like, oh, of course. And I'm realizing she has no idea what this thing is. How'd you get it? And she's like, well, it's on consignment. I can't tell you anything about it. Oh, all right. So even if she doesn't know what it is, clearly whoever gave it to her to sell knows what it is. So I'm not going to be able to afford this thing. And, and so I, I said, well, well, how much are you looking for? And she looks at me, she said, would you do 18? And I was like, yeah, I, I would do 18 bucks, you bet. You, know, you good. snookered an old lady for some uh, <laughs> some amazing memorabilia. Clive, I like your style. <laughs> have you ever have you ever had it appraised? Um, no, I mean, it's clearly from them. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily one of the ones that were used for their press conference. Can I ask you a question about the sign? Is it is it pressed metal or is it wooden and painted? It, it is pressed metal. Okay. It does not have the back, which is what makes me think 
maybe it's a prototype or a mock-up or something like that. Because, you know, New York City street signs, they, they have the same stuff on both sides. And looking at, press, at photos of the press conference, it's hard to tell. I mean, they had that one. They had each member of the band had one in the press conference photos. Mayor Bloomberg had one. Those may have been one-sided. I don't really know. It's, it's hard to tell because you only see one side of the guys holding them up all cheerily outside David Letterman. I think they made it that way so they could just kind of slide it over the real street sign to cover it up because it was just temporary anyway for a few days. Oh, that's days. an excellent point. I like right. that. Uh, and they probably did make a, a number of them. They probably did both sides of the street. There maybe were four signs actually visible to the public. Well, moment of truth here, uh, Stephen. What do you think Clive's U2 sign is worth? I think given its, its historical context and its relationship to, to the David Letterman show and U2 and stuff, I, I think a starting point in a competitive auction might be three to $400 in that range. That's a lot more than 18 bucks. Absolutely. Is that is that what you thought uh, uh, it would be worth? It's it's definitely better than what I thought. I, I mean, I figured like maybe 100, 200 tops. So Clive, you know, it's a unique one of a kind sign. Uh, you're gonna make money on this thing. Uh, do you think you wanna auction it off or, or are you gonna keep it? I, I, I'd auction it off, yeah, absolutely. I like your style, this is awesome. So. If you want to bid on this unique U2 street sign, all you got to do is check out our Gotta Have Rock and Roll sponsored auction at access.tv slash rockmycollection. You can always find a little rock and roll gold if you know how to swindle an old lady out of it, just like Clive Young. So thank you again, Clive, for, thank you. for coming thank on the you. show. Oh, thank you so much.